two, one. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another episode of Embrace the Chase. And tonight we are interviewing the Austin John Plays, a very well-known YouTuber in the community, specifically in the gaming niche. But um, love to have you guys join us. As always, we are interviewing over 100 entrepreneurs, content creators, authors, speakers, what have you, as a community over the next year to pick their brain, to see what has made them successful, and if there's anything we can learn from it. So like I said, Austin John is on here tonight. And for those of you that do not know who he is, he is one of the fastest growing gaming channels online right now. So uh, about eight months ago uh, is when his channel started originating. He started posting a ton of content. And since then, he's grown to over 177,000 subscribers, which is just an unprecedented growth rate, which is incredible, and over 28 million views, which is insane for me to think about. But uh, we're so blessed and grateful to have him on. So thanks for being on tonight, Austin John. Uh, is there anything you'd like to, to add to that? Uh, I don't really know what else I could say. Like that was that was a fantastic beginning. Like that that sort of introduction. That's that's what introductions should envy to be. Not gonna lie. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I love it, man. I love it. So, um, as always, guys, we sent over a bunch of pre-recorded questions. Uh, not pre-recorded. Pre-sent over questions to let them kind of go through. But I like to make things fun, and we like to just kind of figure out the flow as we go through here. So, if there's any questions you guys would like to send in, we'll answer them. And I may go off topic and. That's fine. And Austin, if you want to go off topic, dude, feel free to. It doesn't really hurt my feelings either way, all right? I, I am fantastic at going off topic. <laughs> for the record. Well, so, I mean, for starters, you um, your success specifically launched, correct me if I'm wrong, though, with a lot of the Breath of Wild videos. Is that correct? Um, well, I first – I uploaded my first video two weeks before Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, uh, in which I got 17 views. 17 doing doing big numbers there so then let's um, time out real quick since you're starting there what inspired okay. you to start your youtube channel and then can you fast forward from there for us uh so i didn't really i i always wanted to stream and i always wanted to like play games online because like i love games like like literally my entire life is gaming um, I have every console. I have like a dope setup. Uh, like uh, I need to redo the LED so I don't post pictures of it or anything. Um, and I, I, I wanted to start streaming, and I picked up Skyrim Special Edition because, like, I watch someone who does Skyrim mods, and I'm, I've never even played Skyrim just because like the interest in like seeing the game and everything. So then I started doing like a let's play, and I recorded. Um, this is now about five weeks before. Uh, I made my first Pokemon video. But what inspired me is I love gaming and I wanted to make a video and I was laying... I, I got a copy of the game early through means that you don't supposed to do and that's now a brick to 3DS. I'm sure some people know what that means. But um, I, I was laying in bed and it was like 4 a.m. and I was like, you know what? There's things that I've learned about this game that if I was just getting it, I would love to know these things. So I'm like, screw it. Go. And I sat down in my chair and I started typing away at little bullet points. And then it became more of like a top 10. And then it became uh, like I was going to post it on Reddit and it was going to be nothing. And then I was like, I could read this. I know how to do audio production. I know how to do video production and editing and everything else. So I'm like, screw it. Let's read it. The next morning, I woke up, had my Earl Grey tea, read my script, and then I spent probably three days doing B-roll for it and trying to get clips of it, and I didn't even have a capture card at that point. And, um, yeah, that was that was my first video that actually made it. The, the Skyrim rooms, those, those were all garbage. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> that was me still figuring out what I wanted to do microphone and audio quality-wise. So that's so a dark that's chapter in my life. November you 11th. You down the Skyrim, right? What was that? You hid the Skyrim videos, right? Yes, there's only one left, and it's unlisted, just so I can reference back to how horrible the audio quality is. So then that Pokemon video that you... You said it was like the Before You Buy, I believe is what it was. Is yeah. that right? The first Tips, tips and Tricks Before You Buy. That one. So how long between when you started messing around with Skyrim videos to when that one launched? How long was that play period? That was about five or six weeks, and I would do a video, I would do all the editing of it, I would upload it, it would get zero views. And I would watch it back, and I'm like, okay, 
I don't want it to look like this. I don't want it to sound like this. What can I do better? And then I looked up additional gear and then I looked up additional plugins. And then I looked up how I was doing my audio capture wrong. And then I was looking up uh, the fact that I had a video card that wasn't the best for doing this. And just the software wasn't good. And plus, I'm a Mac guy. Like I have my 5K iMac right here. So being a Mac guy in a PC world is, is pretty difficult. <laughs> True. True. So then, um, so that you've answered the question of what inspired you. Then I guess my next question would be, what have you done to position yourself to experience such growth? Because that's crazy, man. One hundred seventy-seven thousand subscribers in eight months is wild. Uh, what have I done to position myself to the experience such growth? Um, well, when you first start off, you don't have anything. You have nothing. You don't have a single sub to your name. And your first subs are going to be your friends, your coworkers, your dad, your mom, whomever else, like close friends and family. And then it's uh, like I shared it online on Facebook and my friends saw it and some other people saw it. And like that first Pokemon video, like that was it was it was some pretty good quality in that one. I even got like a little splash screen on Fiverr. It was great. And putting all that together, someone was like, wow, I don't even play this game. But like, wow, you, you did a good job. This is your first video? I'm like, yeah. And then just the, it, it kind of happened more and more. And then I looked up specific things that people wanted to, to, to find out more about. And that was where I started coming up with the ideas on the direction to go for the videos and what I needed to say and everything else. And then uh, I, I'm not going to lie. One of the things that greatly helped, I, I, I've been playing Pokemon my entire life. I have all of the games, or at least have at one point or another, have had all the games. And I had such a huge collection of like extra legendaries and mythicals and things like that. And I was like, they're just sitting in my bank, the, the Pokemon bank. Like, I'm not doing it. Give them away. Let's give them away. And then I was like, guys, comment, subscribe. I'm going to give you a Pokemon. We're going to do a drawing. And we did that. And then I put out more videos and I talked about the, the giveaway more and everything else. And then it, it snowballed. It snowballed really fast. And then, like, right around Christmas, I was experiencing two to 4,000 subs a day. Like, <laughs> ridiculous numbers. And How often were you posting? Like, just Monday through Friday? I don't believe in having a schedule for posting. Okay. Because when you have a schedule for posting, you're going you're gonna to grab at stuff. You're going to try to think of things. And they're not going to be your best work. You're going you're gonna to feel discouraged about it, and you're not going to be, <clears throat> like, you're not going to give it your all. Instead, I wait for inspiration to hit. And when I say inspiration, it's like finding out something in the game or some new information or, you know, discovering something on my own and then posting a video about it. So there was, so like, when it was the heat of the game, seven a week, eight, ten a week. When it was a little bit, like, after the game has been going on for a while, three, four a week. Like right now, Breath of the Wild came out March 3rd. It's now July 18th, March, April, May, June. So that's four, that's this many months. <laughs> and, you know, we've discovered a lot of stuff in the game. The DLC came out and, you know, we were, we're seeing a whole bunch of stuff about that. Um, but like, I don't want to put out BS filler content. I really don't. I want to, I would rather pick up a new game and do something about it and see if my channel likes it. Like when I did Ukulele. You follow my channel. Did you see any of the ukulele videos I posted? I did. No, no one did. No one did. No <laughs> did one wait, you did one, didn't you? It was a review of ukulele. I did I did six ukulele videos. I could have sworn you did. I watched yours, and then there was another guy I could have sworn did ukulele. It was you and Boogie29988. Um, no, I, did, I did Should You Buy It, like an early review, what you should what expect from it. Yeah. I was about to remember. I was like, I remember your voice with ukulele in the intro, but um, ukulele hasn't come out on the Switch yet, so there's really been no reason to to look into it. That and it's it's a very flat game. Like, there's a couple of hidden things here and there. It's not like an open world game that you're gonna discover this thing. So it's nothing like Banjo Kazooie. Ben Banjo Kazooie was even. I'm sorry. I think there's a mosquito here. <laughs> Um, 
love it. Andrew Kazooie, well, I mean, like, other than going to Cheeto and Treasure Trove Cove and doing the backwards of everything, like, there, there, was, there wasn't too much to it. True. Unlike Breath of the Wild, where, like, you need to learn things. You need to be in the mindset of the game to actually, you know, really do everything. True. I guess that's where nostalgia hits. When you're five years old playing Banjo-Kazooie, it's not the same as when you're 25 playing ukulele. No. Uh, it used to be right behind me. But yeah, I, I love that game. That game's fantastic. So then, you were posting content, just posting videos on YouTube. I guess when I say, what were you doing to position yourself? And you already answered that in a very great way. But I guess I'm also curious on another side of it. Were you personally posting on Facebook, personally posting on Reddit, personally posting on other sites, or did it just all spiral because other people were doing it for you? Um, something that YouTubers should always keep in mind is shareability of videos. And in specifically what I'm doing for my games is it's not too much, like I'm not making viral content. I'm making videos that I, I saw my niche. My niche was that, like it, Right now, I'm replaying Final Fantasy XII, the re-release for PS4. It just came out. I, it, it was one of my favorite games. The Gambit system is fantastic. No one really made videos about it. And if you did, it's just an immediate screen capture, and then someone would put either annotations or they would edit in text on top of it on how to do this specific thing. And it wouldn't be explained very well. And that was my niche. I was like, that's what I can do. I can capture this gameplay. I can talk about it. I can explain it in a very easy way. Because, like, I'm 29. I'm a grown-ass man. I see some of these videos, I'm like, I still don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> I still need to mess around with it for a few hours to do this one thing that this dude did in, like, six minutes. But if I understand it, and I can explain it easier, it's better. Right? True. I think so. No, makes perfect sense, man. Makes perfect sense. So then let's move on to the next question. Are there any YouTubers specifically that you look up to or aspire to or just pull inspiration from? Uh, and it doesn't have to be YouTubers. I wouldn't say that, like, I, I didn't come to, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, but I don't watch a specific channel. It's not like I follow this someone person religiously. I, I go for content, which is completely the opposite of what my audience to do. So don't do what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I'll watch uh, game theorists and I'm a fan of their particular style of animation. I'll watch game grumps and I'm big fan of their audio quality for a relaxed environment. Um, there's there's little elements of this person and that person that I see and I want to expand upon. There's also a lot of things that I see that I don't like. And seeing those those things is just as important so you know what you want yourself to be and avoid to become words. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, man. You're Pretend good. it made more sense and sounded better. <clears throat> no, you're good. There's a big YouTuber. I don't know if necessarily if I should say his name, but the type of YouTubers who just put out daily top 10 type content, you don't want that to be basically who you are. You want to be known as someone who provides content. Um, there are some people who do fantastic top 10s and they're relevant things. But then like once you really start scraping the bottom of the barrel, like people see that. And when they see that, they're like, they're, they're turned off by it, whether they know it or it's just a subconscious thing. Like, oh, what are the best five designed Pokeballs? No one cares. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true, man. Well, then um, we'll, we'll segue away from that then. So then as far as the Austin John Plays brand, so you're eight months, probably coming up on nine months into this. Uh, what do you want your brand to be known for today as well as, the question I asked you before we started live streaming, uh, what are you wanting to do after Breath of the Wild or focus on? Well, uh, I'm not a Zelda channel. When I was playing Pokemon, I'm not a Pokemon channel. That's just the game I'm covering. I just want to cover a game. And I, I love Nintendo personally. I'm going to stay with Nintendo games. I mean, like, I also love Bethesda games. I don't know if my audience would want me to play Fallout 5 if it ever comes out or something like that. Um... But, like, I really aim for, like, this is the key 
of doing this one game. Because, like, I'm a completionist. And there are some games like Breath of the Wild that, like, it's it's hard to complete. Like, sure. like you're playing Breath of the Wild. Do you already defeat Ganon? I've already defeated Ganon, but I think I only completed, like, 15% of the game. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I did more than 100%. I did every... Thing. I got every single key item except for one one horse bridle. That's that's something for another day. <laughs> but like so much of the stuff, and I feel like there's lots of people who would want to see these things and like get that little extra something that they didn't even expect out of the game that they're playing. And I'm just gonna keep going that for like every game that is really fun and interesting. Uh, Friday, I'm gonna be picking up Splatoon. I think that's gonna be more of a live streamy kind of game, not so much of a tips and tricksy kind of game. Uh, definitely doing Mario Odyssey later this year. If it's a real open world game like people think it's going to be, then it's going to be fantastic, and I'm going to have lots of helpful, you know, video pre-recorded, you know, Austin John's videos, Austin John style videos instead of just you know live streams and simple, you know, this and that. But if it's like, if it's like Super Mario 64 where everything is kind of laid out for you, there's not really too much you can do tips and tricks wise. True. And uh, there's another <clears throat> one. Oh, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is coming out. Very excited for that. <laughs> I can always tell when you're really passionate about something because your channel just like, boom, video, 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 video. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that, man. I love it. So then let's, uh, let's transition. So you mentioned live streaming. So the next question is obviously, what ways do you monetize or can you monetize uh, if you haven't started to? And specifically, I'm honestly interested in, do you live stream for money, like on Twitch, or like how does that work? Um, I don't do anything on Twitch except okay. for the charity events. Friday, uh, shameless plug. Actually, no, yeah, shameless plug. Uh, Friday, I'm actually going to be part of a live stream to raise money for uh, less fortunate children. Uh, the name of the foundation, I don't want to quote it incorrectly, so I'm going to circle back on what the actual subject is. You can email it over to me. I'll link it in the description. Nope, I already found it. It's called Extra Life. Uh, playing games for healing kids. We're going to be doing a Splatoon 2 charity on July 21st. We start at 4.30 p.m. on the twitch.tv slash our Nintendo Switch. So we're working with a Nintendo Switch subreddit. Nin Mobile News, uh, Philip, me, Nathaniel Brady, Brandy, we're all going to be playing in order to raise $2,000 for our children who are desperately in need, which um, I think we're going to be able to smash that number out of the park. But that's that's the only thing I've ever done on Twitch. Back to YouTube streaming. I love YouTube streaming because I've grown to, I'm almost at 180,000 subs. And I, I was actually just saying this to my girlfriend last night. I can't visualize that. I have no idea what that looks like. We looked it up. The largest stadium, the largest football stadium in the United States holds 104,000 people. My channel is one and a half of those stadiums. Which is crazy. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's bigger than any concert venue in New in. Uh, the United States and all of those people have subscribed to me within the last eight months a very fresh very new channel with a lot of engagement and I love streams because while I'm playing there's always little fun things that are like eh, there are fun things to see and talk about but I don't want to make a video about it and then uh, being able to interact and chat with the community and my subscribers and having them feel like oh wow like like, people message me all the time on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, like, I reply. Like, I'm a regular dude. Like, I'm here on my phone, and I'm like, oh, someone DM me, and, like, I reply. They're like, oh, my God, you you replied to me, and I'm like, yeah, you messaged me. Why wouldn't I'm, I reply to you? I'm not going to lie. That was me. I was like, shot in the dark, message this guy. I'm going to see if he even responds, and you're like, sure, man. I was like, what? I was like, he wrote me four paragraphs. He must be serious about something. <laughs> and he's not from China trying to trying to make me do a video about, you know, showing off Joy-Con covers. <laughs> um, awesome. But that, that rolls into monetizing the channel. Uh, there's always sponsored content, which I I'm right now at a point that I'm I'm cutting down on my promotional videos that I do for other people. They're they're um 
Total Mount, they're a fantastic company. They sent me a Nintendo Switch wall mount, which I actually have my Switch mounted behind my monitor, which is the best thing ever, instead of sitting on the desk because I already knocked it off twice. <laughs> um, I have a personal passion of hot sauce, so like I teamed up with Fuego Box. Uh, I think they're, yep, yeah, you can see it right there in the corner. Um, Fuego Box is fantastic. They send hot sauce to me every month, and like we do. Uh, I'm going to be going from more of a full review video style to more of just like a little plug at the beginning, uh, just for just for that. But um, I'm not really doing. You don't really get money that way, not at the size that I am. Um, unless someone wants to work out like a sponsorship deal going forward, but like that's my manager's job to figure out. Um, really, it's just ad revenue. But like, I'm not in this for the money. Sure. I'm really not. Well. Let me rephrase that. I'm not in this for the money now. And what I mean by that is the money I'm making from ad revenue alone, that's not living on money. Absolutely not. And, like, I'm not bougie. I drive a Nissan Pathfinder. I'm not, you know, over here with, you know, a, a C-Class or something. I, I, I'm pretty humble. I'm pretty humble. And I want to build my channel to the point that I can – live on playing video games and not just playing video games but like with the community of people we play video games because everyone loves video games video games are the best it's like one of the only industries that's not dying besides amazon amazon's not dying you know who you remind me of austin oh do you do you follow chris stuckman the, the movie reviewer no so chris stuckman go look him up man he's awesome he just passed a million subs um, he's been doing movie reviews, I think, eight years now on YouTube. And the guys from Ohio, they more than are able to live off of their YouTube channel. Um, but he's so cool about it. He's just chill. He And he said exactly what you said. My wife and I, we just wanted to be able to live and have a comfortable life and just enjoy doing what we love doing and not stress. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. So, but I'm going to bring it back to business real quick because I do have a side question. So you said okay. manager. Is, did you pay someone to be your manager? Is it like a friend of yours? Or like, how did, how does all of this happen? I'm just trying to understand, like, do people reach out to you and go, hey, I, wanna, I want you to talk about my hot sauce? Or did you reach out to them and say, I have a YouTube channel. I can promote your hot sauce. Um, almost everyone except for Fuego Box reaches out to me. I reached out to Fuego Box because that's a passion <laughs> project. Um, as far as my man, well, in the YouTube community, we have something called MCNs. They're called multi-channel networks. Whether they like to title or not, that's what they are, they're MCNs. The same way that like a recording artist like Rihanna would be part of a record label. Columbia? Sony? Whatever record label she's a part of. It's Eminem true. is to Interscope. Like that. Uh, I'm part of, a, of, a, of MC <clears throat> I'm part of an MCN uh, called Studio 71, which is the third or fourth largest for views and subscribers, but like the 12th largest in amount of channels. So they prefer quality over quantity. I'm actually one of the smallest channels they've ever picked up because of my growth. Um, they also do Superwoman. They do Good Mythical Morning. They uh, do all the stuff for for Dwayne Johnson. They, they have some huge people on the channel and I'm very happy to be a part of that community. But uh, yeah, whenever I have someone that I don't want to deal with, my manager just takes care of that. <laughs> that's awesome. That's what it manages for, right? That's so true. That's so if someone does DM you and it's really freaking weird, they'll get a professional email from your manager like, stop. <laughs> I mean, like, if it's really weird, <laughs> I'm really weird. <laughs> but, like, if it's good, really weird, I'll reply. It's because a fan's a fan. It doesn't matter how weird it is. As long as, as, long as it's not threatening or endangering or anything else like that. Like I've, I was an eight year old boy. I was retarded and, and a boy at eight years old. Like I have, if I grew up in today's day and age, I would have no problem messaging someone. Um, <laughs> but like, the worst part are like the people who um, have English as a second language and don't really understand how to put sentences together. And then they're trying to explain something to me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just not understanding anything you're saying. <laughs> just like visualizing this. I'm so sorry. Just watch my next video. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to jump backwards lasagna. 
<laughs> Thanks for your support. We appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it. I like, I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. All right. Well, segue, because I don't want to take up too much more of your time, because I know that you probably have live streams going on tonight. But do you have any? I literally have nothing to do tonight. No live streams. Well, sweet. I'm going to go play Final Fantasy Twelve, which no one wants to see me play. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. That in like. It's a very, very boring game to watch, and it requires a lot of concentration and attention, especially since this one has, like, a four times speed-up mode. So, like, my eyes are glued to the screen, and I'm just like... <laughs> that would be the live stream. It would just be watching say, just at the TV. What is he doing? <laughs> All right, we'll segue. We'll segue, then. What advice do you have for anyone who wants to start a YouTube channel? Um... Yeah, we'll just kind of leave it open-ended like that. Just do it. Just do it. You never know... Well... There's there's three things. Three things. One, prep. No. Plan. Plan, prep, produce. I just made that up. All right, plan. Three P's. Awesome um, plays. <laughs> Austin John, or, or the third one, four, play. Oh, no. <laughs> um, plan. Plan what you want to do. Discover what your niche is by seeing the videos that you like. It needs to be something that you want to watch. It needs to be something that the community will be engaged about. And it needs to be something that... <clears throat> excuse me. It needs to be something that you care about. Because if you don't care about it, you're going to make a shitty video. And if you make a shitty video, no one's going to watch it. The second thing is prepare. If you make a video with poor audio quality while trying to talk about something, someone's going to click away. They don't care what you have to say. If it's horrible quality, unless they really need that information, they're not going to watch your video. You need to have great video quality because YouTube is pushing 4K plugins and everything else. Even though, ironically enough, I watch my, uh, in the Google Analytics, it actually tells me the percentage of people that are watching at like 1080. It's not that many, especially live streams. Live streams, everyone's watching at 480, maybe 720. Majority is 720. No one needs 4K content. This face does not need to be in 4K. <laughs> is that why you don't have the overhead lights on? I mean, I could turn the overhead lights on, the pretty lights, but uh, the pretty lights are for are for the money camera right there. That's the bad point. Right now, we're just on a little webcam, so I can move it. You're actually you're actually on the live stream webcam right there. Hello, but, it uh, still looks good. I I have friends who are professional videographers, and like, you bought a 5D Mark III, brand new. To, to record your face. And I'm like, yeah, well, I want people to see the stuff behind me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I need my hair to look good. <laughs> it's the whole experience, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Um, you need gear. You need gear to make yourself sound good. Otherwise, no one's going to watch you. You're going to get 20 subs, you're going to be discouraged, and you're going to not want to do it anymore. Like, I invested probably not including the iMac... I had my uh, my 60D, my other DSLR. I killed the bug. Got him. He's on the screen now. Okay. Uh, I had a 60D lying around. I looked how to hack it with Magic Lantern, so I saved money on not needing to buy a video camera. I had like a $200 mic sitting around, and then I just kind of put all that together. So... Maybe 2500 I started with as an investment to kind of have everything the way I needed it to have it. And then since then, it's been upgrading and everything else to, to, make, to make better content. And then the third is produce. You don't know what you want to do until you do it. Um, it's like jumping out of a plane. You're going to be scared about it. You're not going to really know what to do while you're in the air. Someone can explain it to you, but it's only once you're in the air and you're floating there and the wind is rustling at your clothing, do, do you really get a feel for what it's like doing it? <laughs> yes. And fourth, play. Because 
Actually, no, this is super important. No, um, I play video games. I love video games. And when Breath of the Wild came out, I didn't make a good detailed video until probably 30 hours into playing it. Granted, I did 30 hours in two days. Um, <laughs> but I believe in enjoying what you do first. Like, I, I put a lot of hours into the game just to understand it, to, to enjoy it, to have that organic feeling of being absolutely clueless in the wilderness and trying to figure things out in the game, um, which that's an amazing experience. And if you don't have that, you will burn out and you will hate what you do. You won't dislike it. You won't lose your passion. You will hate it. You will spite it. And that's the worst thing that could ever happen for a YouTube gamer. Dude, I love this. This interview is so much fun right now because so far on my channel, I have interviewed some very serious people, like authors, international best-selling people who, like, I'm asking them questions, and they're awesome. Don't get me wrong. Awesome. Great content. Great answers. But I love having this diversity because you give almost the exact same answer, but in, like, such a fun way. Whereas like this last guy I had on was like, make sure you enjoy life. Just enjoy it. And you're over here like, dude, play games because it's what you enjoy. I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad people are getting to see this. But no, dude, those those four Ps. That was awesome. Did you come out of that on the spot? Oh, yeah. I pulled that out of my ass. Freaking love <laughs> I freaking love that crap. I'm, I'm, I'm good on the fly. <laughs> you need to do it, right? It's so true, though, because people don't sit back sometimes and just enjoy life and enjoy things they like doing because I feel like oftentimes we're the society makes us feel guilty because we're doing something fun we enjoy and that we're not like hustling to get ahead. True. So. I mean, uh, that's kind of how I feel with being an adult with an amiibo collection. <laughs> an adult with an amiibo collection, he says, while he could probably sell out two. Super Bowl arenas <laughs> with the amount of people he has subscribed to his YouTube channel. I love it, dude. All right, last question for you. Is there okay. honestly anything on your heart, on your mind, anything you just want to get off your chest or you just want people to know? Uh, thank you. <laughs> if, if anyone's watching this who's who well one if you're watching this you don't know who i am i'm austin i play video games youtube jock youtube.com slash austin john plays uh subscribe to me i'm amazing we're here to party hardy don't hurt nobody uh we always focus on positivity i am a quasi family friendly channel meaning that i follow the fcc rules and regulations for uh what you can and cannot say like you can say shit anytime like if something is shitty, you're in a shitty situation. You'd also you'd also call someone a dick who's being a dick. You just can't refer to male genitalia with that word because that's inappropriate. Hmm. Is this is this about the whole um, like YouTube sponsorship stuff? Like ads? Are you, are you talking about the ad apocalypse? Yeah, is that what you're talking about right now? Um, no, just like I I play games that well, Nintendo is obviously very family oriented, and I don't. Like, there are people who play games who are cursing up a storm. And, like, like one, if I'm watching your video while in a business environment, I can't have this guy going mother effer, dropping the N-bomb. You can't have that. Or same thing for, you know, a kid watching a video and trying to learn how to do something. His mom's going to walk by. He's probably watching it on his mom's phone. Be like, what the hell is this? You know, you got to, you got to, you got to. You got to diversify. And the easiest way to do that is the path of the least resistance. Just don't drop the F bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Keep it simple. Just common sense. Yeah. I love it. That's so good. Not common. You have to explain common sense. That's <laughs> such a valid point. It so is. true. It's, it's very sad. Awesome, man. I really appreciate you being on. For those of you, like I said, if you're not already following Austin John Plays, go check out his channel for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's a ton of fun. He provides a lot of great content. His intro alone is a blast, especially the song you have with it. I think it's called Park Bench or something. I love uh, that. that was it, it's actually just 
every YouTuber gets access to like a back end of like a catalog of like four hundred thousand songs that are all copyright free. It's just one of those. But like I looked in there, and I'm like, this is a fat beat. Yes. <laughs> 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 so simple so clean it's a nice bed for me to talk over it's that, true i love doing the intro with the what's going on boys and girls what's up world austin john plays here and having that and then just having everyone else on twitter tweet me that and then they get to be featured like it's a fantastic like i love what i do and if it wasn't for the people watching me which i didn't again i didn't expect anyone to watch me I really did it. I thought you would be like, oh, this is helpful. Thanks. Not just like. I'm going to unplug this so I can actually hear you because I need to walk over here. So I can... might be feedback. Sorry, people watching in the future. <laughs> what the heck? Did somebody mail you that? Well, when I first started, I didn't have like a good backdrop behind me or anything. So I had. Uh, basically, it's a giant cardboard changing thing, but <laughs> I made this, which says the Austin John Plays Family of Positivity, and it's a large thermometer that started when I had 10,000 subs, 20,000, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and like, I was like here for the longest time. Actually, I'm not going to lie, I made this around the 20 mark, um, <laughs> and then around Christmas, it was like, Bam! I almost fell. Uh, it died off a little bit in between Pokemon and Zelda, but then Zelda hit, and then crazy numbers. And I hit my video with my, my first video to hit 100 million, which was fantastic. And uh, yeah, I can't do what I do without people who are watching videos, including you lovely people who may or may not be watching this right now. Uh, and I'm, wow, it's been 40 minutes. Sorry, sometimes I talk. No, you're good, dude. You're good. Doesn't uh, affect my time at all, man. I'm glad. I'm happy to be doing this. I just wanted to respect your time. Uh, I'm, in, in my personal life, I'm, I'm an entertainer. I'm a DJ. Uh, I've been, I've been doing it my entire life and like talking to people and just, just, just appealing to the masses is just what I try to do best. I do love how you you include your community into your YouTube videos. So like the people at the very beginning that you sponsor, that's cool. I like yeah. that. I, I love it. Stole that from Good Mythical Morning, but I focused more on the people, not the not the BS of it. Well, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Plus, like, like say for example, you're a ten year old kid. You made this intro. I featured in a video. You're going to show that video to everyone. It's true. Free marketing. <laughs> you did right. You did right. Austin John, super marketing, Nostradamus expert something. Ten-year-old kids running around his fourth grade class like, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> but some of those videos have 400,000 views. That means that 400,000 people saw this kid say something. When you say things like that, man, and it puts that into perspective, that really hurts my head. Like, I'm struggling. Now that you've said that in this interview about how you sat down and tried to fathom 180,000 people, yeah. that really hurts. Like, that hurts my head. That's a lot of people. So many people. <sighs> Crazy. Well, I love it. We'll go ahead and wrap this up because we're almost 45 minutes in. But I love it, guys. Go check out his channel. You will love it. He will entertain you nonstop. It is an absolute blast for anybody that does play video games. It's fantastic. And if you want, just sit there and listen to his intro and repeat over and over and over again like I have done before with my giant speakers here that annoys my wife like I'll get out because it just continues. Because you're right. It is a dope beat. The bass uh, is nice. The bass is nice. Fun. Fun. It's super good, man. It's so much fun. <laughs> But I love it, dude. Um, I would love to have you on the, the show here in the future as the channel grows, just to kind of see, you know, where you're at and what what's going on in your life. So, well, appreciate it, man. You're one of my VIPs right now in, in my <laughs> mailbox. So, uh, so I'll know when you email me or hit me up for something. And yeah, we'll do. We'll circle back at like five hundred thousand, and then we'll share the story then. And you can be you can be my Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> you can have the exclusive. I need to hire a band or something, some guy in the background making just a play park bench. <laughs> <laughs> just park bench. Uh, 
Awesome, man. Well, I love it. Have an awesome night, and I'll be in touch, brother. All right. Until next time, Austin, John out. <laughs>